Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Elliot Levine, Research Director at the Aurora Institute, and I'll be facilitating today's webinar. It's a series of more than 20 webinars we're offering this fall on important issues from the field of personalized competency-based education. There are four more of these webinars coming up in November that will show us slides uh, summarizing later. Um, all the ones that have already happened are available on our website and you can access all of them through the link that we're putting now in the chat box. Uh, the webinar series is a prologue to our annual Aurora Institute Symposium, which we're offering virtually this year. Um, it's next week from Monday to Wednesday, and we'll be having more than 100 terrific presenters and dozens of keynote sessions and breakout sessions. So we hope you'll join us and visit our website for more information. And we'll put a link for that in the chat box too. <clears throat> uh, during today's webinar, we encourage you to use the chat box to help us get to know each other and learn from each other. And you can use it to share resources or, or anything else you'd like um, related to today's presentation. Um, you could start by introducing yourself there and uh, please feel free to use the chat box anytime. You can also share your thoughts about the webinar on Twitter using hashtag Aurora2020 or mention our Twitter handle that's shown here. Um, and finally, today's session will be recorded and archived on the Aurora Institute website and we'll email you in the next few days with the slides and the recording. Oops, there we go. Uh, today, we're very fortunate to have the opportunity to hear about an essential aspect of competency-based education that we really all need to understand so much better, which is students' use of flex time. And if students are going to be progressing at different paces in a competency-based model, what does that really look like and how does it work? And I know a lot of people really wanna know more about that. So we're very excited today to be hearing from researchers and school and district administrators and students from North Dakota. And we always love hearing from students. Um, so please join me in welcoming uh, Tom Schmidt, who is the principal of Legacy High School, Ben Johnson, who is the assistant superintendent from the Bismarck Public Schools, Mark Broderson and Jeanette Joyce, who are senior researchers at REL Central, that's a regional educational laboratory, and also Ben Patton and Isabella Ternes, who are students at Legacy High School. Thank you all so much for joining us today, and I'll turn it over to Mark to begin some introductions. Thanks, Mark. Thank you so much, Elliot, and uh, thank you everyone at the Aurora Institute for making this happen. Um, we really, you know, appreciate the opportunity to talk with everyone today. I know we would all wish we could do this together, but uh, just having this opportunity to share the work that we've been doing, uh, we really appreciate the opportunity. Um, so as Elliot said, I'm Mark Broderson. I'm a senior researcher with uh, Rural Central at Marzano Research. Uh, before we get, really get into uh, you know, the discussion today, I'm just going to give a little bit of background on kind of where this came from and who we are at TAD. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, so uh, this work was conducted through uh, REL Central, which is one of uh, 10 regional educational laboratories funded by the Institute of Education Sciences. Um, and that is being that is done through the US Department of Education. Uh, REL Central serves seven states in the region, and that includes Colorado, Wyoming, Kansas, Nebraska, North and South Dakota, and Missouri. I think I got all of them. Um, so we're charged uh, through REL Central uh, with providing technical support to stakeholders uh, in our region and conducting research on topics that are of interest uh, uh, and to address needs raised by stakeholders in our region. And all of the work that we do is uh, organized under research alliances or partnerships. Can we go to the next slide? So the work we're discussing today falls under REL Central's North Dakota Innovative Schools Research Partnership. Uh, and a focus area of this alliance is to evaluate and support innovative education programs in North Dakota. If we can go to the next slide. So our objectives today is to learn about flexible school schedules and how Legacy High School has incorporated flex time into students' daily schedules. We'll also learn from our student representatives about their experiences with the flex time schedule. 
Uh, we'll also discuss a study that we conducted in collaboration with uh, Legacy High School to examine exactly how students are actually using their flex time uh, over the period of a, a whole school year. Finally, we'll learn about steps Legacy High School is taking to support students' use of their flex time, answer questions to better understand uh, the Legacy High School system and context, and to share ideas about how we as educators might support students when they're given choice in their education. So if we can go to the next slide, before we really dig into this, uh, we have a poll and we would like to learn uh, from you uh, just a little bit about what your role is and how familiar you are with uh, flexible school schedules. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, your familiarity will increase some or hopefully a lot. So if we can go ahead and I'll launch the poll, please. So if you could take a moment, uh, both of the questions are here. I think uh, if you can scroll down and respond with uh, what your role is and how familiar you are with flexible school schedules. Natalie, I don't know uh, what our responses are looking like, but if we have a good number, maybe we can go ahead and share this. Oh, this is great. So it looks like we have a, a, good, a good representation across the spectrum, a number of students, school administrators, district administrators, and teachers. So that you know, this is great. Um, and it looks like everyone's got at least a little bit of a familiar a little bit of familiarity with uh, you know flexible schedules. Uh, it's about 67% are saying I know a bit, but I'm eager to learn more. Um, well, uh, to help us begin to learn more, I'm going to pass this off to our friends at Legacy High School, uh, where they're going to take us through a description of the work that they've been doing with a focus on the flex time schedule, among the other many amazing things that they're doing there. So uh, this will go to uh, Dr. Ben Johnson and Tom Schmidt. If we can go to the next slide. Thank you, Mark. My name is Tom Schmidt, principal of Legacy High School. Um, Dr. Johnson, are you there as well? Yep, I'm here as well. Thanks, Tom. And Dr. Ben Johnson, assistant superintendent. Um, if we go to the next slide, please. So we, we've been doing FlexMod scheduling for about seven years now. This is our six. One, two, this is our sixth year of doing flex scheduling. Um, it's also our sixth year in our building. So we opened up a new building. It was also time to go ahead and try to enroll something out differently as well. So you can see the why on your screen. Um, our school model was to go ahead and focus on the, the four C pieces. How we want to go ahead and do that is the schedule normally drives those things. So we knew to change things up, to change education for our students, we need to change how we educate our kids. And the number one way is uh, scheduling. Too many times in the past, scheduling always becomes the the cross of we can't do something because of why and time became the factor of that piece so we want to make sure that learning became the constant and time became the variable versus um vice versa so if you could switch to the next slide please so this is a typical student schedule if you look at here this is what a freshman schedule may look like the piece you'll see is we divide our day into 22 20 minute period chunks of time so if you look at the top of the screen, you see mod one, two, and three. Each one of those is 20 minutes. So from mod one to 22, each one of those is 20 minutes, like I said before. We also then talked about classes. Not every class needs to be the same. So uh, global studies minutes per week do not need to look the same way as algebra two minutes per week. Spanish minutes don't need to look the same as physical science minutes. So as individual classroom teachers in a dream world scenario, so we asked our staff, what would you want your week to look like in terms of educating your kids? Some teachers came out with smaller, many smaller chunks of time. Some came out with larger chunks of time, meeting less frequently. So we put that in the hopper and uh, we, we spit out flex mod scheduling. So if you look at Spanish one, for an example, Monday meets for mods one, two, and three. So that class meets Mondays for 60 minutes. You'll then also see that it meets Thursdays for 80 minutes and it meets Friday for 80 minutes. You'll see global studies meets Monday for 80 minutes and then goes ahead and meets on Wednesday for 80 minutes and meets on Friday for 60. And you also see on Friday mods 13 and 14 where it meets for large group. So that class meets four times a week, different time lengths of time. 
but you'll see in mods 13 and 14, it has a large group. So at that time, all, all the freshmen in the building, which is who take global studies are 346 of them. They all meet in the auditorium for 40 minutes. All four global studies teachers present at the same time. So those students get the same content. It can be used for speakers, it can be used for lab demonstrations, it can be used for assessments, it can be used for a variety of activities. So you're getting rid of that activity at one time so your teachers aren't repeating themselves giving the same lecture. You know, three, four teachers doing the same thing four times a day, the next number of minutes we just save by going ahead and doing so. So classes meet at various amounts of time throughout the week. And by the end of the week, the minutes basically come out to be the same thing. The kicker of this is if you look at an 80 minute global studies class, again, I'm looking at Monday, mods four through seven is an 80 minute class. As a classroom teacher, I can then use what's called flex time. So I may be giving a, a, an assessment in class or I might be doing an activity in class and after 40 minutes of that class period, the majority of students have grasped the concept. However, I may have four or five kids who haven't. I can dismiss the majority of my students. I can call back those other four or five students for that last 40 minutes and I can work one-on-one -on -one with those students to go ahead and get them caught up with their learning. I can also do that, um, if you look at Algebra 1 right below that class, I can flip-flop that by saying, I had an assessment today. The majority of kids grasp the concept. Tomorrow, I'm gonna have four or five students who are gonna come in the first 20 minutes of class. I'm gonna bring the other group of students back for the last 60 minutes. I can work one-on-one -on -one with those students individually to get them caught up. So as the train's moving forward, everybody's together and moving together at the same time. Those students who are then dismissed have various places in the building which they can go. If they can attend a Sabre Center, which is we have two different ones that are set up specifically for content, meaning one is humanities, um, social studies, English, foreign language. We have a science a STEM one as well, which is social uh, science and math, excuse me, but there's always a teacher who's in those rooms. So I may be dismissed from global studies for the last 40 minutes, but I really need help on a lab or a pre-calc problem or things like that, I can go in the STEM Saber Center then, or there's going to be a, a teacher who's going to be in there to go ahead and provide those services for me. I'm going to let Dr. Johnson guy explain a little bit more if you would, please. Um, really, with the Saber Centers, our intent is, ideally, we knew that it would start off as like highly skilled tutorial. There's, a, as Tom said, a highly qualified teacher is in there. So it might be your math teacher from your freshman year and you're a sophomore. And so you might have a relationship there. Um, it might be a teacher that you might not see till you're a junior in Algebra 2. But again, that really has helped propel forward a, the collective efficacy of the team, um, knowing that as a department, these are our students in common, and it's our collective responsibility to move that learning forward. Um, ideally, as we continue to move forward, we hope that these can be both um, enrichment as well and extension opportunities. And Tom will talk about that, I'm sure, a little bit more, but also on that MTSSA academic, the RTI type, um, that when students need it, they can get it. But it is not purely just like a thing for struggling students. Students that are excelling can go get help. Students that are looking to just um, clarify something or uh, just work in a place where as, as they have questions, they can reach out to someone. So it's uh, our number one goal is that students become self-directed learners. So we need to give them some time and I'm sure Tom will talk about that with the universities as part of the reason why we have uh, went down this road as well. One thing we did, we visited with our universities and they told us the number one reason that students are not successful at the post-secondary level is not because of academics, it's because of time management. Not be able to handle their time, not be able to handle their days, um, not being able to go ahead and structure that what, that what that looks like. So if you look at this as a freshman schedule, anything that is white on there is non-scheduled time. So typically what you see if a freshman in high school, they may have 40 minutes free, they may have an hour free. Normally that's beginning of the day, the end of the day. These students have their time off during the middle of the day where they can go ahead and use that uh, resource time. So when they have a white space on their schedule, they can get lunch, they can um, go get help at a Sabre Center, they can go to the library, the, the building is yours, they can go to the weight room, get a workout in, they can schedule a music lesson one-on-one -on -one with, with an individual teacher to go ahead and do those individualistic things. Um, if you can switch the slide, please, to see a senior schedule, you'll see there's a lot more white space on their, on their day, so they have more freedom to go ahead and do things, such as leave the building for job shadowing, internships, tutoring, um, a student can go ahead and schedule their medical appointments, things like that. They can get those logistical things done during the school day based on those times versus missing class. The other beauty about the schedule piece is if you look at this student, they have AP Chemistry mods eight and nine on Monday. Let's say that student is absent that day. 
and they miss that AP chemistry section. That same teacher might have an AP chemistry section. That means for the very first time that week, Tuesday, mods one and two, that student could then bounce into that AP chem session Monday, uh, Tuesday, mods one and two, and get the material they had missed the previous day, attend their AP chem session on Tuesday, and they're caught up with the rest of their classmates. Mark, I don't want to go too long. I know we're kind of on a time frame here, so you tell me when um, we're at our time limit. I think we have about five more minutes, actually. Okay, we're, we're so I'm going to ask... Good. I'm going to ask Ben and Isabella to both chime in as they are students in the schedule. They've been with it for four years and um, they can talk about how, what about the schedule, if they like, dislike, um, anything like that again. So Ben or Isabella, who wants to go first? I can go. Um, I'm Isabella. Like, he's, like Mr. Schmidt said, I'm a senior at Legacy this year. And for me, one of the things I really like um, about the flex schedule is that I'm in a lot of extracurriculars and so having the time during the day to go in and get help or get my homework done is really beneficial to me because it cuts my homework time at the end of the day. When I get off of practice at six, the last thing I want to do is be up super late and working on homework. So that's something for me that's really nice. Isabel, can you talk about, you utilize the Art Saver Center, which is kind of a different setup. Can you talk about how that works? Yeah, so for art, um, we actually have, I think, 20 to 40 minutes less every week than the kids in our other high schools in Bismarck, just because of our, how our flex schedule works. So we have uh, the Saber Center time. I'll go in a lot of times to work on my art projects um, because I'm, I'm personally, I'm, um, I spend a lot of time on art. And so it's kind of time consuming thing for me. So having the time to go in and having access to all the supplies in the art room is very nice to me. And my teacher is in there as well, so I can get use from her. And it's set up just like a science um, saber center or a humanities one would be, um, it's just for art. So what's the protocol that do you sign up? Do you just get to walk in? What does that look like for, how do you, if you, if you got some white space on your schedule, we're on, on the screen right now. Say you're looking at Wednesday mods 14. That's, let's say this is your schedule. Do you just walk into the art room? Do you schedule a plan? This is real, how does that work? Yeah, so if she doesn't have, I'll check with her, check her schedule. If she doesn't have anything going on, I can walk in and just sit quietly in, in the back or ask questions if needed. Um, but if she does have a class, I'll check with her before and talk to her and make sure it's okay that I can come in and just sit in the back. And usually she's okay with that. But if it's a really full class, then she'll maybe say, come in quietly, grab your stuff, and you can go work in the hallway or in the other room, or she'll find somewhere for me to work. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty easy to just walk in whenever you need it and you don't have to schedule a time for, to meet with her at all. Thank you. Ben, anything to add? Um, not really. I'm, I'm kind of similar to Bella in the way that I'm very uh, involved in at the school. So if I ever have, um, you know, if I have like games or practices and stuff and I don't have time to do the homework at home, I often find myself either coming in before school or using my um, flex time to work on uh, work on assignments or labs that I missed. So it, it helps as like a, like a, like a catcher upper. So whenever I'm, you know, busy, I can catch up on a lot of the classes and, um, yeah, I'm in the, I mean, I find myself more in the math and STEM Saber Center because my schedule is a lot more heavier in that. And it's nice because, uh, like, uh, Mr. Schmidt said, there's always a teacher in there. So, they can, they, they have, you know, I have all the resources I need, whether it's related to the class or not, they, they always find a way to help. So, yeah. Thank you, Ben. So Ben mentions there's always a teacher in there. What we do with our staff is our contract is for 75 teaching mods. So if you look at a mod as again as 20 minutes, our staff or student have student contact for 75 mods per week. So we schedule our staff and then we allow for anywhere from, uh, let's say seven or eight to one to seven or eight mods for teachers to be scheduled in the Sabre Center. So as departments, they'll go through and schedule themselves who's gonna be in there at that time of day. And then those, two, those teachers are in there at that period of time. So when Ben goes in the Sabre Center, there may, it may be his classroom teacher he has, it may not be. So it might be somebody he's had in a year previous that he has a relationship with, or it might be somebody that he's never had who will have for class next year that who he's now established a relationship with. So our, our chemistry teachers, for example, they don't say it's Mr. Blath or Mr. Mitchell's chemistry students. They say there are chemistry students and students have both of those teachers, basically. Mark, are we good on time now? Yeah, I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, perfect. Um, 
because we could we could ramble on for an hour or so. And we have a lot, and just so everyone knows, we have a good portion of this, um, the end of this uh, available for Q&A and ask questions and uh, to, to provide some more context on everything that's happening. So there will definitely be room for answering a lot of questions, I hope. Um, if we can go, uh, I think Jeanette's gonna uh, take over now and talk a little bit about uh, the study that we all conducted together. Um, I think we can go ahead and go fast forward through a couple of these slides right now. And Tom, as we go through the next couple of slides, if you just want to give a quick overview of what they're sure. going to look like. Uh, sorry, I'm having a technical issue um, with advancing. I'm not sure why. Um, Natalie, if you're able to advance, please do. I am not, but Elliot, it looks like you have a pencil instead of a yeah. mouse. So I'm not sure if you're on annotate or something else. Yeah. I'm X to out of that. that if you see that bar. Yeah, now you might be good. Thank you. There we go. So what you're looking at here, this is a, I'm standing in the hallway. The teacher's room is to my left, hallway through the graduate room is on my right. So these are students in the hallway. They may be in this class. They may be flexed out of class. They may be sharing a class with a different classroom teacher from across the hall. Um, and if you click the next slide, this is one of the Sabre Centers. This is students getting, they're getting help from, this looks like a STEM Sabre Center. So there's various students coming from different classes. You could have from pre-algebra students to AP Calc students in the Sabre Center at one time. Can flip again. All right, I think uh, we're gonna pass this over to Jeanette now. Great, good afternoon, everybody. And I'm just gonna give you a little information about the study that we did um, with our LHS partners here um, using the student time log, which we're gonna be playing in a little bit today. So if we go to the next slide. Okay, so um, during the 2018-19 school year, we partnered with LHS at REL Central to study how students were using the flex time. So it was a, just a way to really understand what they were doing. We know that they have these white spaces in their schedule, but the, we only had sort of anecdotal information from students about how they were using this time. Uh, the school and the district leaders partnered with us and we developed a time log using SurveyMonkey where we asked students to enter the time, um, what they were doing. So on a given day, they would be asked to fill out the time log for that day. And part of the study was to explore whether students who were struggling academically were accessing those instructional supports that LHS has built for them, such as the learning centers um, and what they were doing there. So the study report, there's a link there at the bottom of the slide. Uh, there's a couple of different versions of the study report. There's the, um, I can put the link in the chat. There's a one pager for a quick overview. There's a four pager and there's the complete report with detailed appendices. If you're interested in learning more, you can do so there. Um, so we'll go to the next slide and talk a little bit about the time log. So over several portions of the year, because we didn't know whether students might use their time differently at the beginning of a semester, towards the midterm, towards the end of the, the school year. So we collected data from them several times and we asked the students themselves to record how much time they had and how, how much of this time they spent on a variety of activities. Uh, the first sort of branching question was, did you have control over your flexed out time or did a teacher ask you to use that time in a certain way? Then we asked in either case, uh, we asked when they had their control of their own time, did they choose to use it for academic purposes or were they gonna use it for non-academic purposes? And here I just wanna remind you that the white spaces on their schedule does include lunch. They need to have lunch during that time. So we expected there to be a portion of their time that was non-academic. When they answered that they had flex time spent on non-academic activities, it was interesting to uh, Legacy and, and Bismarck to know whether students were staying on campus 
or going off campus? Um, that was the sort of interesting question that we wanted to know. And then uh, in terms of academic activities, we gave them some choices. Did you go to one of these learning centers, these SABRE centers? Did you meet one-on-one -on -one with a teacher? Were you working on your coursework independently? Were you practicing art or music? Um, were you engaging in extracurricular activities, uh, seeking out the guidance and counseling, or were you spending it in some other way? And um, then we asked for some details on other. When they said they were working on academic subjects, we also asked them which academic subjects, math, science, English language arts. So for each of these, we would ask them to put in the, the estimated number of minutes. Obviously, we didn't expect them to say, you know, I spent 12 minutes exactly on this. But if they had 20 minutes on academic subjects, was it just one subject or was it divided among? So that's information about the time log. And what we'd like to do now is put you into some breakout rooms with one of our, our um, facilitators here and have you, we'll give you a profile of a student because we did use demographic information to sort of uh, categorize the responses. We're gonna give you a profile of a student and ask you to, to embody the skin of that student and fill out a time log, just so you can see what the time log is like and so that you can make your best guesses um, if you were a freshman or a sophomore or senior and you had this much flexed out time, what might you do with it? So through the magic of Zoom, I think we so will real, fa real fast, I've, uh, I've added a link to the time log. So um, we'll kind of introduce this a little more when we go into our breakout rooms, but if you, and we'll also put it in the chat just in case uh, you didn't have a chance to grab it. But if you can, you can go ahead and click on that link. It will take you to the time log and then uh, you'll be ready to go once we um, you know, settle into our breakout rooms. So I think we are ready for our breakout rooms. All right, sending you all in breakout rooms in just a moment, thanks.
Hi there, Pam. I see you just joined our webinar and we are actually in the middle of a breakout room activity. So I can go ahead and assign you to one of the breakout rooms and you can go ahead and jump in with that group um, if you if you want to. Um, I, I think I clicked on that by mistake. I'm sorry. Oh, that's OK. So I, I'm sorry to bother you. <laughs> no problem at all. No problem. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.
as I was saying, Justin, how we can go ahead and fix those to make it a little bit better. That was what I get cut off on saying. So, okay. I think we're all back. Um, so ho hopefully everything did, did the uh, accessing the time log work out for everybody? Not in our group. No. No. <laughs> I, I, we, we, we did a Q&A and talked about the, the process of the time log and kind of what, was, what we're finding. You know, that's kind of, we did that piece and then Q&A about everything else, so. Great, uh, any, any like your key points you want to share that you all discussed? Um, yeah, we talked about one formation, you know, getting staff on board, um, questions about the usage, you know, um, Bella talked about as a freshman, her white space wasn't as much, so she was more locked in. Um, now as a senior, she has more freedom to go ahead and, and choose wisely to use her time or poorly, depending on what she's doing that day. So we talked about that matriculation through the system as a freshman through a senior, how your openness and your flexibility, your schedule grows. Um, talked a little bit about those students who are academically astute normally choose to use their time more wisely, meaning using the flex time to use what it's designed to go ahead and do while our underclassmen or those students who aren't as academically performing as well aren't. And um, we just start talking a little bit at the end about the new work that, work that we're trying to do now about how we're going to go ahead and revamp, especially the, the Humanities Saber Center to make it more um, designed to what it's designed to do, what we want it to do to go ahead and make it more appeasable for students to, make, to use that time wisely. That's what we just finished out before we got, came back. Yeah. And, and as I mentioned, we'll have a lot more time for question and answers and really dig into, you know, provide a lot more detail into these, um, into these different topics. Um, and I think uh, you know, we had a really good conversation with, uh, with our group as well. Obviously, we wish, uh, you know, there's a little bit more time, but we, ha we have limited time. Um, but it was some good conversation around, um, you know, you know, how are students using their time? Do they tend to use it uh, together? Um, and uh, you know, kind of with a focus on preparing students with the, the skills they need to succeed after school, like with time management skills or whatnot. Um, uh, Jeanette, how about any highlights from your group? I'm going to let Maria or Elliot speak. Um, they had some good observations. All right, so I'll speak for the group. Um, we, after taking the uh, survey, uh, which was really very interesting, uh, we uh, noted some of these points that the survey actually by itself uh, serves like an intervention tool, uh, making the student uh, be self-aware with regard to how to manage one's time, you know, so how to use their time more effectively, or um, just to be, I guess, maybe if the, the child or the student needs help, then that's when uh, true intervention can come in. Um, I also personally uh, like the survey because it can provide that uh, sense of ownership and accountability on the part of the student, especially as they get more used to having a mental uh, picture as to how they're going to jot down their time and divide their time and spend it in a more meaningful manner. That's great. Thank you. One, one other thing that, that uh, I mentioned that I think Jeanette was interested in sharing um, was the idea that, you know, our students, the profile we saw, I think maybe everyone's was the same, but that only spent, uh, I think, one eighth of their time on academic self-directed work. And, you know, I was wondering, someone could say that's a bad outcome, but it's not clear to me that that's a bad outcome if without this approach, maybe the student would have spent zero minutes instead of 10 minutes. And I wonder about, I really wonder about if this is an important building block for self-direction and that that one eighth of the time spent in the intended focused way is actually an improvement over uh, without this approach. Tom, do you want to address that or we can address, I think I, that is a good segue into some of our findings and then we'll talk about some of the implications perhaps, or if you want to address that now, that's, I think. Yeah, I think time. anytime we get students to go ahead and use self-direction, we're accomplishing what we're hoping to accomplish. Um, obviously in an ideal world, we want the, uh, I, the, the perfect student that's going to go ahead and use all their time wisely and, and do those sort of things. But we also find that some students, um, 
they were they weren't sure of the time log. What I mean by that is they they might not go to the Saber Center, but they would leave a classroom. They're flexed out of English for an exam. They walk down the hallway and they see their math teacher. So they bump into their math teacher. Now they're using that piece to go ahead and, and go ahead and reach out for help. Where in old system they wouldn't be doing that. So they may not have specifically went to the Saber Center, but they were catching teachers in different parts of the building. You know, it's a lot of that happening as well. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and move uh, forward to the uh, next part. So uh, I'm going to give a very brief uh, overview of the, the findings of our study. And I think that that will help uh, address a lot of uh, these additional questions. So yeah, we're going to go. There you go. Okay. Um, yeah, so as Jeanette introduced us, so we, we administered the time log actually over five one-week periods uh, during the 2017-18 or 18-19 school year. 1819. Okay, 1819 school year. Um, knowing that you probably have students use their time uh, at the beginning of the school year um, probably is a lot different than when finals are coming up. You know, they're probably more likely to go uh, get help and stuff. So we wanted to control for that. Um, and we actually ended up collecting data from, I think it was about 45% of the students um, in the whole school, uh, freshmen uh, through seniors. Uh, and again, across the school year. So when we were anal when we were analyzing this data, you know, what you were inputting in was um, number of minutes per day. They, they were asked like, how many minutes did you have this day? Uh, and then um, of those minutes, how did you break it up? Um, but in our analysis, you know, this is not one student in one day on average, this is what they did. Again, they're not, they're not likely to do 10 different things in any given day, but just on average across students and across time, um, you know, what is the proportion of the, the time and how does that break up? So what you can see here is that across all students and across the school year, on average, um, students chose to use their time on academics about 20% of the time. And uh, as, as someone had mentioned, like, uh, I, that potentially that is could be really good. You know, when you when you give these kids uh, you know free time, they're actually choosing to use it, some of it on academics. So I think this this is quite positive. Um, about three percent of the time, teachers determined how they use how they were going to spend their time. Uh, but it should be noted that again, since these are averages, actually a good portion of the students um, uh, had none of their time determined by teachers. It's just on average it, it ended up breaking out um, as three percent. Um, and you can see the uh, majority of the time students uh, spent on non-academic activities. And I think as uh, Jeanette pointed out, keep in mind that lunch is in here and also uh, travel time, like if students were going to a career academy or to an internship or whatnot, they might record that as being non-academic time. But we also recorded it here uh, for the non-academic pieces um, as did they spend that time on or off campus? We go to the next slide. So when students did choose to spend their time on academics, this is showing you the different breakouts of the proportions of times that they spent. So you, know, you can see here that the majority of the time uh, when they're working on academics, they're working on coursework outside of the learning centers uh, about 71% of the time. Um, and one of the really neat things about Legacy High School, you, know, you can now gather from uh, some of the pictures we were shown at the beginning, is they have it really set up to promote these kind of like group work activity areas. So these students have, have space um, that they can use either individually or um, collectively outside of their classrooms to work on, on this classwork. Um, it's one of the really neat designs that, um, of the school. Um, you can see here also uh, about 7% of the time they spent uh, in the learning centers or the Saber centers. And that's where they uh, you know, seek out kind of tutoring or uh, test help or you know, a te other teacher's gonna be there. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, and about 3% of the time meeting with a teacher. We can go to the next slide. So when teachers determined how students use their flex time, and if you recall, it was about 3% on average of their time, uh, you can see that uh, the majority of that, well, 42% of that time, um, they asked the students to go to the learning center, whereas 12% uh, of the time uh, they were meeting with a teacher. 28% um, of the time was other, and I think, um, and you know, uh, Tom or others can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, uh, a lot of that time might be uh, being sent to uh, complete an assignment or to retake a test or, or something along those lines. Um, it might also have been uh, in just uh, anecdotally talking with some students afterwards. Um, they might actually be um, going to another school to provide tutoring, but you know, the teacher asked them to go do that. So they recorded that as a teacher determined time. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. 
So one of the things that we did in the study is we also looked at, um, you know, were there differences in how students use their time based upon uh, demographics and student academic achievement levels? So here we can see that, uh, you know, female students uh, tended to use a bit more of their time, tended to choose to use a bit more of their time on academics than on uh, non-academics, uh, actually about a 3% uh, difference there. Uh, one of the other things that we noted was, um, I think students who qualified for the uh, free reduced life price lunch program and uh, minority students tend to have a little bit more of um, teacher determined time. Uh, and then other than those, uh, really the demographics didn't change based upon amount of time they spent on academics, what academic topics they, they tend to engage on. Um, what was quite interesting was some of the differences based upon a student academic achievement levels. Um, so if we can go to the next slide. So what we did was um, basically we got uh, all of the students' um, you know, state assessment scores from the previous year and based up and we we're able to classify them as uh, struggling, uh, meeting grade level expectations or excelling in both math and reading and uh, based on the previous year. And then wanted to see our students choosing to use their time differently based upon if they're struggling in math and reading or, um, or, or, or excelling. Um, and here we can see that students who are struggling or uh, Excel, uh, sorry, we, we see students who are struggling in both math and reading had more teacher determined time uh, than other students, which I think, you know, that's promising. We would hope that, you know, students who are struggling, particularly in both academic areas, um, hopefully, you know, you, the teachers are aware of that are in our, you know, helping direct them a little more <laughs> uh, towards uh, getting uh, assistance that they might need. Can go to the next slide. So here we see uh, the proportion of students who spent their non-academic time uh, on versus off campus. And you can see that uh, for those students who are excelling in math and reading, um, spent a, a, a much larger proportion of their non-academic time on campus rather than off campus. And um, you know, I, we can't tell you exactly why that's the case, but I think we can have some hypotheses of why that might be. Um, you know, they might uh, you know, be less likely to leaving campus to go just go home if they don't have classes at the at the end of the day, and so they can stay at, on campus and work. Um, or, you know, really, we would like to think by students that spend their uh, flex time on campus um, are more likely to actually then transition into academic time because they're there to access those resources. And we can go to the next slide. So finally, uh, you know, here we see that. Uh, Struggling, struggling students spend less of their academic time focused on uh, working on co coursework outside of the learning centers and more of their time on other academic activities. Um, and we didn't, we, we, we tried to find out what these other activities were, but you know, the response, these were open-ended responses. So they either a lot of times didn't respond what those were, or sometimes um, we couldn't quite tell what it was they were getting at, but some of these other ones were like working out in the gym. Um, and even a few times, even they put lunch time in, in here. So, you know, the idea is that um, you know those who were struggling were more likely doing something other than what we would consider, you know, you know, obviously an academic topic, even though it was classified as academics. So that's uh, you know that's my part for uh, going over the study results. Uh, I think the the rest of the time here. Uh, we're gonna turn it over to our friends at uh, Legacy High School and first talk about, you know, what's, what are some of the things that are happening now um, since we've done this study or in reaction to this study or just how have things progressed over the last year since we were working together? Um, and then after that, we'll uh, kind of open it up to a QA and a and let, provide some opportunities to really describe what's happening at Legacy High School a little bit more and learn more from our student representatives, what their uh, experiences are um, and kind of, you know, what engage in a Q&A trying to identify, you know, what are some things that we might do as educators um, to really, you know, support students uh, when we are giving them choice and, and providing this free time um, to help them, uh, you know, cho choose how to, how to use it uh, to its fullest extent. So I think we can go to the next slide, please. And I'll turn it over uh, to our Legacy High School friends. Yeah, thanks, Mark. So what we're doing now is we're working very closely with REL Central to figure out how can we go ahead and make things even better? And how do we go ahead and get students to be more involved in using their flex time the way the school and, and schedule is designed to go ahead and have them do? 
So this past summer we met and we had a student panel with us as well. We started examining the reasons why students were not attending. We're focusing right now mostly on the uh, Humanities Saber Center because the science is um, normally more busy. So trying to figure out what, what's the number one reason why we can, how can we get more students in there? So they developed some survey questions for us. We've been serving our students. We've been serving our staff. Um, we met as a group and we started doing some protocols on examining the reasons why and then what the fixes are going to be. So we met the summer, did that piece for me again, coming up here in the next couple of weeks with that panel. And then we've had um, two half days so far. We've got another um, session planned with our, fac our full faculty to go ahead and work. The first one is going over the survey results and finding out, um, let's look at the data and see what it's telling us. The second piece has been trying to dive in and problem solve that data. And then our next stage is to go ahead and correct to find out what can we imp start implementing to go ahead and change this data to make it even more positive. So what I've learned from this piece is one, I'm um, working with, I'm gonna blow smoke for, for Mark and Jeanette right now. So they've been helping us so, well, so much with this piece is when we don't have to do a survey before, we would just throw some questions out there and to see what we get and to get the data to come back the right way. We spent about a year and a half with uh, Mark and Jeanette and their team to go ahead and find out what questions to ask, how to ask those questions to go ahead and make sure we get the data that we're actually looking for. So I learned a lot about that process. And now analyzing that data is has been another process and a stage to go through. So that's kind of where we're at, but we're using our PD sessions this year as a building to go ahead and dive into this work. Um, our staff are excited for it. This is what they want to go ahead and do. They want this to flourish. And they want to find out more ways to make this possible and um, more beneficial for our students. So that's kind of where we're at. Does anyone have any questions about you know activities that might have occurred or thoughts that you had uh, as you're looking at the study results and you know how that might align with what your thinking is or if it raised any uh, raised any questions for you? And uh, why don't we just give people a minute to type into the chat box if they have questions or you're more than welcome to unmute your microphones and just go ahead and ask questions directly. Um, I'll, I, have, I have lots of questions, but I'll wait. <laughs> you know, one of the, the non-academic things you might see up there that some kids, students have done is, um, I use this story all the time. We had a young man who was walking out of the building in spring day in North Dakota. You know, you get a few nice days in the spring and it's, it's a gorgeous Friday and he's walking out, asked him where he's going. He said, well, I've got a, a golf practice after school. It's a tryout to see who's going to be in the golf. who's going to be in the play after the tournament on Saturday. So he's going to hit a bucket of balls close to the school. He said, don't worry, I'll be back. So he made the choice to leave during his flex time, went over, hit a bucket of balls and came back for his chemistry class a little bit later. Um, proud of that moment because as a senior in high school, I never would have made that proper decision. I'd have made a very poor decision and I left the building and I wouldn't have come back. So that's a non-academic thing the student had, had did at that time, but then it came back for that piece later. So we, we saw a lot of those type of things in there as well. I think that that's a good point too when we look at this in terms of downtime. I mean, yes, we talked about lunch, but I've also been in other uh, school districts with like a four by four block where there is no downtime. And you think about students, whether it's a heavy academic load or just an intense day, um, we all as adults have those water cooler moments, you know, break for social media, what have you. And there, that's the point is, can you step away from your work and then re-engage? And so you can't learn to do that behavior if you're never presented opportunities and then the guidance behind that. So I do think in the next steps, when we begin with the end of mind, you know, we want those self-directed learners. The outcome, when you see lots of white space, Tom and I, Tom, another kind of top, but really kind of, we've been centered around as a district, personalized project-based learning, you know, the MTSS, the standards-based education, that kind of convergence. And so if we want to support students, whether it's enrichment or um, interventions that are needing to occur, we need to give them some time and opportunity to do that work. And we as teachers need to help guide them there, but there's been a lot of lessons that the students are figuring out about the schedule and how to best use it that now we're just trying to say, okay, how do we systematize this and how do we kind of let people in on, Tom, you'd say that like secrets of like legacy secrets, this is how you utilize um, that. So again, we began with a convergence of um, technology, time, and the flexible space around trying to implement a more personalized competency-based approach is really kind of the end game that we're building towards and um, 
So I see this as an early stages on in the journey, not necessarily like we've arrived and we really do appreciate the work uh, Rel and Marzano Skier has been able to help us kind of fine tune and uh, continue the conversation. And we want to know the truth about it. We don't have the emperor's clothes here. We want to know where it's working and what isn't working. And if we can do this, let's do it right. And if things aren't working, let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to pick on uh, Ben and Bella sitting there right now and, and speak freely. Um, your last day in the building, we're, we're off right now for a teacher's convention week. So we're not actually in school today or tomorrow. But your last day in the building this week when you had free time. And be honest, what did you do with your time? Were you in the building? Did you leave the building? Were you? What were you doing on your flex time this week? Um, if, you were to fill, if, you were, if you were to fill out the survey, Ben, right now, what did you do on your last day? Um, well, my last day was Monday, and I had a 20-minute break. So that, I have a really busy schedule on Monday. So like they're talking about with the water cooler time, um, it's just nice to just sit and like get a snack, go on your phone for a little bit, because you only got 20 minutes. A really uh, course-heavy day. So yeah, if it's nice outside, I'll go outside. I'll go for a run or go on the bikes in the weight room. Just do whatever I can because it's a long day on my Mondays. So, yeah, if I have shorter breaks, it's just to reset and sure. get after the next class. Yeah, How about you, Bella? Just, oh. maybe, this, maybe this is like a way to bring back the recess that people think is so horribly missing from high school these days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, my last day was actually Monday as well. But I had a volleyball game um, on Wednesday, and it was uh, going to be a four-hour bus ride there. And so I was missing most of my classes for that day. So I actually spent a lot of my time going around to my teachers, figuring out what I was going to miss. Um, I took a test because I was going to miss one of those in class. So I was kind of the opposite of Ben, actually. That happened to be a really busy day for me, like getting my work in so that I don't have to worry about it because I'm not going to be able to do it on a bus when I don't have Wi-Fi or the technology, like access to the technology to do it. And that's the things we're, we're hoping to accomplish for all students, um, that they take that um, the self-advocacy that Bella just showed to go ahead and, and do that piece. And now, right now, we, is everybody doing that? Of course not. You know, but are some students using it? We say that's those who are using it um, the right way are doing very, very well in it. And those we have to figure out a way to get all students to be using it the right way. And that's where we're using the help from REL to go ahead and help us figure that out how to do that. Um, I see there's a question in the chat um, from earlier where people were just wondering about um, where you all are in terms of remote versus uh, in-person and how that uh, remote time, if you had any, was uh, affected in terms of this flex mod. Yeah, we're running our schedule like we normally would. Um, we are a hybrid right now. So our A through uh, K students come one day or L through Z students come a second day. So then we have a C day built in as well. So our C day is normally on Friday. This week it was yesterday because we are off, like I said, today and tomorrow. So students who are under a 70% in any of their classes need to be in the building during those C days, they follow their traditional schedule. And um, they're in the building, so we can go ahead and catch those students to get them caught up in other areas as well. But on a B day, so let's say um, Ben and Bella are both at towards the end of the alphabet. So they were in school on Monday. They were not there on Tuesday. When they're not in the building on Tuesday, they may be synchronous or asynchronous, depending on their classes. So those teachers might say, have everybody be logging in. So half the kids are in the class face-to-face. -face, other half are synchronously online with that class, or it may be an asynchronous activity on that day as well. Various from class to class, day to day. And when you all were, and I presume at some point, entirely remote, what was the interaction, if any, between this flex mod idea and the remote setting? So last spring, we went 100% distance. Um, we did have access in the Saber Center, so students could reach out to the teachers through Google Classroom and access teachers for one-on-one -on -one help that way. And right now, the Saber Centers are open remotely. So there's a teacher in that Saber Center. If I'm a student who's at home working, I can log in and get one-on-one -on -one help via Teams, you know, for the teacher individually. Um, there aren't other questions in the chat box. I'll just ask one, which is how do the teachers feel about this approach to scheduling on, on average? I'll let uh, Tom answer that. And if he doesn't, I'm going to swoop in. So, Tom, um, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I'll say this. Since we started, we've had nobody request to transfer out. 
We've had many more across the district who want to transfer in because of it. At first, it wasn't easy. And I mentioned this in our in our breakout room, so I apologize for um, those who, who heard it before. But what we did is we gave a 90-day feedback board. So we told her, so teachers decided they wanted to schedule first. We didn't come out and dictate it to them. So what we did is kind of knew we wanted to get, but we asked teachers in a dream world scenario. So the year prior to opening up with FlexMod, we asked our teachers, dream world scenario, what would your day look like? Uh, what would your week look like in terms of educating your kids think of you and only you don't think about your colleagues just think of you and only you and some teachers described um, smaller chunks of time meeting more frequently some so larger chunks of time meeting less frequently um, somewhat a large group settings where they could get all my kids at one time to deliver my lecture bring my guest speakers so they described flex mod to us without knowing what they were describing took all that stuff process they came back a couple weeks later said here's what you described put it up at the board gave a presentation where flex mod was and they were in hook line and sinker um and then we gave a 90 day feedback board in each workroom we don't have set classrooms for every teacher we don't have bells so a teacher to share a workroom with various other contents we put a 90 day feedback board so we're going to try this for 90 days the fleas are going to come with the dog we know there's going to be issues we'll work through those issues but any concerns you have put them on the 90 day feedback board, and then we'll go ahead and address those after 90 days. If it's a pressing thing that, I mean, this is an emergency, we'll obviously address it. But if it's a nitpicking thing, it's put on the 90 day feedback board. What happened is um, you would put something on the board for an example, and another teacher would come in as they'd see that, they had a solution to it, they wrote their solution on there. After 90 days, I went and collected the sheets, there was nothing for us to go ahead and address because everything had already been addressed. The other thing we Please. did is, the other thing we did is during a PD day, we just, as admin, we just pulled away and we had teachers just talk. So math teachers would get up and say, something that's going really well for us is this. Something that we're struggling is this. And then Q&A afterwards is something that math was struggling with, science men have already figured out, and they shared back a solution and teachers just problem solved. And our job was to just sit back and give support where needed, but surround yourself with good people, give them the resources and get the heck out of their way is what, was what we did. And do you remember any of the fleas, any of oh, the problems sure. Oh, sure. And, and, uh, and, how, and how they were resolved? Yeah, I mean, that was the very first one. If you saw that freshman schedule we had up there, um, we give too much autonomy to our freshmen. So they couldn't handle, we wanted to give them some flex time, but we gave them way too much. They were making too many poor decisions with that piece. So we added more mods to their schedule. So like global studies, for an example, at one time was 10 mods, we cranked it up to 12. Physical science was 11, we moved that one to 12. So we added more mods to the week to go ahead and take away some of the free time that they had. So they could be making those poor decisions, but they did have enough free time to go ahead and, and make the right decisions. We also created an advisory program um, that was Mrs. Butts's uh, brainchild and she came up with the advisory idea and it, it was a savior. So what we did is uh, we had one person who was a freshman advisor and now we have four per grade level, but at one time we had one person, he had all the freshmen. So his job as a freshman advisor was to teach freshmen how to use the FlexMod schedule properly. Um, what to do during your free time, what to do when you're flexed out, uh, how to access the Saber Centers. So we had to teach students to go ahead and use that time because they had never been taught that. Very similar to a freshman in college who's never been taught how to handle their free time when, you know, we keep kids under lock and key for 12 years, 13 years of their life with a bell schedule, teach them like robots to walk through the hallways. And then three months after graduation, we turn them loose on a college campus and say, go be successful. And then whether or not, we blame them and not ourselves. So we have to create opportunities for kids to fail and we can teach them how to fail in the system. So when they go away out our doors, they make the right decisions. I would just add too, to the original part, what a great transition is, you know, we talk about cells and bells for kids in other situations. Tom kind of probably danced around that. But I think the same that teachers felt the same, you know, I'm locked in for 50 minutes a day and that's what I have. And I can only use the bathroom for a short amount of time. Um, I've had teachers come up to me um, and say, if you take away the schedule, I will quit the profession. I will never go back and teach on a regular schedule. And that's pretty common. Um, and not everyone knows if they've been on another schedule and taught that Tom has talked about that, the people who have taught in other things, they notice it and appreciate it more than maybe some of our younger teachers who didn't talk, but they yeah. really haven't had deep experience with that. Yeah. Our veteran staff really understand a lot more. Our, our rookies, our, our teachers that we've hired fresh out of school are, this is all they've ever known. So this is, to them, this is okay. It's great. But our veteran staff are different. You're talking about one of the failures we, uh, we did have a, 
the very first day we went to FlexMod, um, one of the scheduling faux pas in there, we had every student was off for 40 minutes. So it was the first day of school and it was one of those things that didn't get caught and all of a sudden, what the heck are all the kids doing out here? We had the entire building was off for 40 minutes. So we had to go ahead and do some rapid schedule changes, reissue some schedules to get a wrap on that. The nice thing about it was all the teachers were also free at that time. So we had enough supervision to get through it. But um, at that time in our building, we had 860 students and they were all off at once. Now we're at, now we're at about 1,380 students. Wow. But we, we fixed that problem, but it was a mess of the first day. So yeah, we had our, we had our issues. The thing about it, you just have to expect you're gonna have issues, you roll with the issues, you fix the issues and you move on. But I understand that going into this, you're gonna have those things are gonna pop up, yes. Tom, when was that? How, how long ago did you switch? This is our one, two, three, one, this is our six year with the schedule. And then before that, were you a block schedule, four by four? So we we made a combination. So the history of legacy is this: um, Bismarck is um, we added a third high school to town, so we were the new kid on the block. So when we first started, our building was a done yet. So we were on a college campus. So we did a block schedule there for logistical reasons. Then we moved our second year. We had freshmen and sophomores. We went to a traditional fifty minute skinny schedule for logistical reasons. Then the third year we moved into the actual building and we implemented flex mod. So those juniors who were with us. They had a flex schedule, they had a block schedule, they had a skinny schedule, three years, three different schedules. Nice. And what we learned is pros and cons of all three, right? So the, the block schedule was great because some teachers wanted large chunks of time. The skinny schedule was great because, you know, some teachers didn't need to see their students that many minutes a day. So flex mod is a combination of all that. It's a hybrid. And your band of fine arts teachers, what do they think of the uh, flex Love mod? it. Love, Love it. it. You know, the, the band guys, for example, is giving this when I was a percussionist. I knew what percussionists did. We sat in the back and screwed around and threw pencils and spit wads and we dinked around the entire time. So like our freshman percussionists right now, they don't meet with a regular band, but once a week. So they have a, they, they have a um, small group, as we'll call it, just the percussionists one on one with the band instructor. And they're doing rudiments and fundamental things and this and that. And then once a week, they're with the full band doing so they're in sectionals. Basically, once a week, they're with the full band doing full band rehearsal. And we can do the same thing. So what the Spanish instructors can do is take Bella for an example. She might have 40 minutes free on her Monday. Our band instructors also has free time at that time. She can schedule one-on-one -on -one lessons. So instead of having saber time with music, they do one-on-one -on -one lessons. You know, another thing that we have that Tom probably won't brag enough about is our enrollment in the fine arts is far higher at Legacy proportionally because kids are able to get more classes through. And so even they're able to stay in, you know, not forced to choose. They can still be in AP classes or this and that. It, it, and, and well, with the CTE classes, and we have more kids that are graduating with uh, here in North Dakota CTE career technical ed completers than the, I think, Tom, the last three years, you have the number one percentage and number state three. scholarships. Yeah. Yeah. So kids can take more classes because the flex model allows that to go ahead and happen. So our band and fine arts people love that piece because kids will still choose to be in music. Um, because students can get one-on-one -on -one individual lessons, they can walk down and free time with the core instructor instead of taking voice lessons from the person down the street. Um, all state vocal jazz, for an example, has uh, 16 members in the all state vocal jazz uh, team. Of those 16 members, 11 of them came from Legacy last year. And we attribute it to the students having that one-on-one -on -one time to go ahead and meet with the instructors to go ahead and, and do one-on-one -on -one individual lessons. Great, so, so let me just check in to see if there are other questions before we uh, wrap up. We have a little time if there are some more questions, but um, we don't need to go to the end if, if folks are done asking questions. Um, did you all have anything else you wanted to add before we move into our couple wrap-up slides? No, I say this, it's it's not a perfect system. Um, there's always things that we can fix. There's always things to do differently with it. We're constantly learning and growing from it. Um, but we have to create opportunities for kids to go ahead and learn and try, and try something different. Uh, there's a lot more to high school life than academics and we need to provide kids that opportunity. And we're hoping this provides that for them. I would just add that, you know, I, we talked about beginning with the end in mind and our district and kind of that desire to, you know, focus upon the Stern Fifth Education, the MTSS, supports and project-based learning. But if we don't reconfigure time, that schedule 
and the call back time and uh, students flex time has really allowed them to be the self-directed learners there. And I speak as a parent too. My daughter is a freshman just beginning and it's a little bit different now, but you know, she went in early in the day and studied for, went to a Sabre Center to study for, you know, a math test later on in the day, that type of thing. So um, I'm seeing it as an administrator, but also from a parent viewpoint. Um, but Tom is great with building a great culture and climate. It's relationships, relationships. I think Tom would, um, if he had more time, would talk about just really building relationships with parents, students along the way. So there's been a lot of trust and capital built along the way so that um, people know that as we do something different, um, we're always willing to work with people and make sure that it, it's meeting students' needs. And, um, Somebody that posted an, S an SEL question on here. One of the things that the schedule does allow for us to do is we have a, um, a practitioner who comes to the building um, once a week and students can schedule using their flex time one-on-one -on -one, um, therapy sessions with this practitioner. So instead of us taking the students to the practitioner, the practitioner comes to the building instead to go ahead and provide those services. Flex time allows that to go ahead and happen so students aren't missing any court class time then. And we also have the guidance time then too, more explicitly, Tom, than with the resilience you know, learning kind of that SEL tier one curriculum that your counselors are taking point along with your advisors where it's a little bit more explicit and uh, continuity versus um, perhaps across the town. Yeah, Dr. Johnson was able to give us a little bit more support with that piece. So we've, we've add, we have freshman advisors for every student, but we also go through sophomores through junior now as well. So every student has an advisor who they meet with once a week to go ahead and provide, um, uh, we're doing Y try and um, resiliency breakthrough right now with all our students. Um, also, I just wanted to add, like, I really uh, like the flex model schedule that you have shown. I'm just curious about the growth, like in terms of, you know, how your students have experienced traditional schedule prior to entering flex. I mean, how that has changed socially and emotionally for them. Um, you know, it's hard. So uh, yeah, I don't even post that question. I collect some data on that piece. And that's something we relate to go ahead and collect as well. Was that like, so all, you know, we're getting, um, I don't know what the right word to use is, but we're, we're, not, we're not getting concrete data from that. What we're getting is we, we visit with students. You know, we visit with them when they come back from college. We bring a group back of, of freshman college students every year on Christmas to talk to our seniors. This is the things I wish I would have done. You know, this is what I've learned, this and that kind of thing. We are getting data from universities. So I visit with our two, our two state universities every year to find out, are our students coming to you prepared? What are you seeing? What can we do a better job of? So we're getting that kind of data, but we're not getting from every student. You know, we're getting that college data is what we're getting back from. So it's tough to go ahead and get concrete data from everybody. Great, well, I think I'm gonna um, move back into our um, wrap up here if, if, if everyone's uh, ready. Shall I go ahead and do that? Great, well, I'm just gonna move on. Uh, let's see. Oh, great, I'll leave this up for uh, a minute so it'll be also in our recording. I should mention uh, uh, to the presenters, a lot of people um, come and they say, oh, you had a webinar on that. We archive the recording. So a lot of people will be watching this over time. So I want to make sure I leave this information there. Um, and uh, so just to wrap up, I, I really wanted to thank all of our panelists so much. We really appreciate the valuable insights you've shared about the FlexMod schedule and, and the research that can be done to try to document what's happening with this and how it changes over time and influences students learning. So thank you. It's been a great uh, learning experience. Um, and we also appreciate uh, folks who attended today. Um, there should be a link now, yes, in the chat box. Um, that's a, just a three question survey, if you wouldn't mind taking a minute to fill that out. Um, and while you're doing that, just want, whoops, just wanted to mention um, that we have four remaining webinars in this series coming up in November on a variety of topics to advance your work in competency-based education. And at this same location, you'll be able to find uh, the link in the chat box, which I'm sure is gonna be there in just a sec. Um, you can see all of the webinars we've had uh, in recent months um, and, and watch those if you'd like. Uh, 
And finally, as I mentioned earlier, our Aurora Institute Symposium will be held next week on Monday through Wednesday. So we hope you'll join us uh, and visit our website for more information. Um, and finally, whoops, usually there's one more slide there. Um, in any case, I was just, there, we usually have a slide with all of our contact information. Um, I can't tell if this sharing stopped, something happened on my screen. In any case, um, we welcome you to stay in touch with us. We're at aurora-institute.org. Um, and once again, thank you to everyone for participating in today's webinar. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, and thank you to all of our presenters from REL Central Legacy High School and the Bismarck Public School District. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.